strangest looking letter I'd ever seen. A chilling little envelope bordered with flying bats and eerie serpents whose eyes were tinted green. Now the letter was addressed to me, so as I opened it, I froze. What I read turned my complexion three shades of blue. It said, my name is Isaac Horowitz. I'm a male witch, a warlock, and I feel I need to spend some time with you. Now, as a Christian from a little church with God's call on my life, a man of faith and power with a challenge to grow, I did what any saint would do in my situation. I tore it up, said, Lord, no way I'm going to go. And gently and methodically, the Holy Spirit spoke and reminded me we are God's voice to our nation. It's the church's responsibility to witness. So reluctantly, I accepted this witch's invitation. He had the house you'd expect, the old English cottage, a nightmare on Elm Street special right to the core. The overgrown ivy, the gate that creaked when opened. Somehow you'd expect Freddy to answer this door. The doorbell rang a hollow gong. The knob twisted then opened. And Isaac stood before me with a grin. His jet black hair and well-trimmed beard flowed with his black silk clothes. My skin crawled as he said, please, come on in. Hanging pentagrams, horoscope signs, a Ouija board and Dungeons and Dragons games set on the table, a crystal ball with an incandescent shine, and graciously he handed me some steaming herbal tea. Its presence caused my memory to jog. I thought of every horror flick I'd seen when I was a kid and thought, man, you drink this stuff, next day you'll be a frog. <laughs> led me to a high back chair as he meticulously began to unfold his scenario with evil patience. I was given a giant leather bound book jammed with newspaper clippings, thus the reason for this witch's invitation. With eagerness he pointed to each article with pride. He said, I healed this woman through a Babylonian chant. You see this man, I cured him while performing druid worship. I was paid to curse this man with AIDS by his aunt. On and on, page after page, delightfully he flaunted each incident for an hour without a breath. He said, do you realize through my understanding of the dark regions that I can make you rich or even curse someone to death? I sat literally intimidated by his immensity and demon power, while his face shone with a satanic arrogant bliss. Then placing his hands on the arms of my chair and leaning into my face, he said, what can your God do to compete with this? I knew then how Moses felt when his rod turned to a serpent and the three Egyptian magicians did the same. It's as if you're sitting there in that stunned moment where your faith gets violated and all you feel is weak, powerless, and lame. I desperately and deeply prayed, saying, Jesus, give me wisdom. I don't want to put you through some foolish test. Then a shaft of light shot through my soul, igniting my eyes with fire. God stood me up and I threw the book back in his chest. That Isaac, I'll not compare God's miracles versus Satan's. The issue's not God's kingdom and Satan's lair. The real comparison is the condition of your soul and the condition of mine. And you puppet of the devil, that I will compare. I said, my friend, one day they're coming for you. The soft associates in your incantations. The friendly demons you think you now control. 
The time will come when you'll be lying in bed, wheezing like a dying animal. When those spirits lay claim to the rights they own to your soul. Then the room will grow dark, and the most hideous evil faces you've ever seen will come flaming out of the floor with a yell. The vile informants that promised reincarnation will claw your spirit and victoriously drag your soul to hell. Then I grab the book and says, in that moment, which mantra, which incantation are you going to chant to tell them to leave you alone? I said, my friend, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what I would say. I am bought with the blood of Jesus. Let me go. I said, Isaac, when you tossed that book in my lap, you gloated with a sinister victory. You rejoiced when you saw your name in black and white. Now I rejoice, but not that your council of demons are subject to Jesus, but that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Then Isaac jumped up from his chair and screamed, You must leave now! I said, I will, but one last obligation. Next time, think twice before you rumble with a man of God. By the way, thanks for your uh, witch's invitation.